Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and today I wanted to make a video response to a video that I'd seen by Canadian Prepper, which was itself a video response to uh, something else that he had seen. And it's on a topic that's been on my mind quite a bit the past couple weeks in particular, uh, and the topic is um, uh, networking with other prepper groups. How much do you kind of keep to yourself? How much do you try to create strength in numbers. And uh, one of the reasons in particular that it's been on my mind lately is because I just finished watching Walking Dead Season 6. I'm a little behind because I watch it on Netflix. Um, but if you're familiar with that show, and if you're watching my channel, you probably are, um, uh, you know that uh, this character Negan uh, his, uh, is the head of this very large gang sort of organization. We don't know at the end of Season 6 exactly how large, but it's big. Uh, and he's a tyrant ruler. Um, yeah, they come up all the time in history, and they very frequently arise out of uh, situations of anarchy. There's a void of power, and uh, vacuums don't tend to stay vacuums. They get filled with something, and very frequently, initially, they get filled with, with tyrant rulers. So it's been on my mind the idea of, um, gosh, how, how do you not get into the situation where you're, you're at the, uh, the whim of one of these, these groups that are, that are you know, run by people that are in it for their own their own purposes and they're, they're not necessarily looking out for, you know, the, the, uh, the benefit of, of all the people that they've subjugated. Um, and my thinking on that is that you either, you have two choices. You really have to either be big enough to compete with them, uh, which is networking with lots of other people, or you have to stay small, small, small so that you just really pass under the radar, that you're that this hobo, you know, walking along that doesn't look like a resource to anybody. Um, and I really think long term, uh, the the idea of say, staying that small is just not um, is not sustainable because eventually, you know, you, you can't just pick your way uh, along. You know, the resources are going to start drying up, even things that you've put back and hidden, and you're going to have to start making a life for yourself. And, um, it, and by that I mean, you know, be, becoming sustainable with you know gardening and and, and hunting or whatever you do. Um, but you just you can't pick off the corpse of civilization forever. Eventually, you'll have to uh, create a life that looks like something, and when it looks like something, it's going to look like something that's valuable to these people that are inevitably going to pop up, these tyrants. So I think really the only long-term solution is to network with other people, and I think that that might be difficult. I know that it'll be difficult, especially in stressful situations. Canadian Prepper has a great point that um, you just don't know anything about these other preppers. Um, and, you know, what are the chances that the, 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 the pros outweigh the cons, uh, you know, that you're exposing yourself uh, to all of this. But I think ultimately, one way or another, you're going to have to network with other people. And uh, the decision, the only decision, I think, is whether you want to do that networking, you know, pre-collapse or post-collapse. Um, I would argue that obviously there are certain benefits to trying to do that pre-collapse. Um, um, maybe there's also benefits to doing it post-collapse. But I, I think one way or another, um, the only way to really survive uh, long-term is to be networked with other people. Um, do I know exactly the right way to do that? No. Um, do I ha have a lot of thoughts about how difficult that would be? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of our job to look at reality, and that, as preppers, that's kind of what we're we're doing, we look at reality, look at the grim reality, and kind of like swallow the pill as it is, not as the way that we would like it to be. Would it be nice if we could all kind of like live in a state of sort of egalitarian anarchy and, you know, just people, you know, making things work on their own? There's a certain charm to that. Obviously, there's downsides too, but there is a certain charm to that. But I don't think, and history doesn't bear out the idea that that would be the case. I, I think that um, history shows us that anarchy doesn't last. There's always a, a power center to try to fill in that void, and that power center usually takes the, the form of some kind of a tyranny. So I think if we're realistic about that, the only real option is to, at some point, possibly sooner than later, to network with other people. And, and that's really the only way that you can defend yourself against what seems to me like an inevitability. What do you think? Make your own response video to my response video to his response video. Um, and, and tell me what you think. It's a difficult question. I don't particularly like the answer uh, because it uh, it suggests that you really need to start exposing yourself to uh, to certain risks. Um, but I think the the risk of not taking those risks is is probably uh, less advisable 
than exposing yourself maybe to some other people in the prepper community because, uh, yeah, for reasons that I just illuminated. What do you think? Thank you for watching.